Hi folks, welcome back and thanks for joining. So today we're going to begin a series on using bioplastics uh, to make uh, food packaging. And to start with what we're going to do is we're going to make something that we can hold water and which I'm going to call uh, water poppers. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go into the kitchen and we're going to use something that has been developed uh, quite some time ago in uh, molecular gastronomy and we're going to use a technique called spirification which is why it looks like I'm about to bake a cake and you are right for a couple of different reasons. One is that um, I'm using stainless steel throughout and that is because bacteria can't live on stainless steel. So if you're going to be making these and you're going to be holding them for any time, well, my suggestion is that you stick with stainless steel throughout. So we're going to mix up these two ingredients and we're going to have a little bit of fun with them. All right, let's get started. We're going to need to work with uh, three different uh, quantities today. Uh, we're going to need a one cup measuring cup. Uh, this is for the water. Uh, we use very little amounts. Uh, we're going to use one gram of sodium alginate and we're going to use five grams of calcium lactate. Now, if you don't have a scale, not all is lost. I've included these so you can take a peek. Uh, these are measuring spoons, typically. This is one quarter teaspoon. One quarter teaspoon is 1.25 milliliters. Now that is just over one gram, so you can use that for the sodium alginate. This one here is one teaspoon, and that is five milliliters, and you can use that for the calcium lactate. And I'm not gonna use these, and I'm gonna move these off because my area is sterile. All right, so let's begin. We're going to begin measuring the water first. So what I've gone ahead and done is I have pre-measured my water, uh, but I have doubled up on my uh, on my amounts because these the bowls. Yeah, I want to make a lot more than what that looked like. I want to uh, share this with some of my friends, and uh, that's why I'm being extra careful. But also, if we're going to store these for any time, again. Uh, we want to stay sterile so that bacteria doesn't grow. So that means I'm going to be using two grams of this and 10 grams of the calcium lactate. So I've started it, I've teared it, and of the sodium alginate. Now sodium alginate is a seaweed and that is going to be our building block for the bioplastic popper. Bear with me. Okay. That's two grams of that. And the reason I use hot water is because it will blend just a little bit easier than if you used cold. Now this is going to take uh, a good bit of stirring, as you can see. So I'm going to stop here and we're going to get this mixed up and I'll be back. Alright, well that didn't take long in a blender. So that's uh, what it is. I put this on my stand mixer and uh, it took about uh, a minute. And I'm ready to add the uh, calcium lactate. And please excuse, my skill just went off but uh, I have 10 grams in here. Now if I, um, let's, uh, let me show you that. Okay, now this cup weighs exactly 100 grams, so I have 110 grams showing here, so that is 10 grams of the calcium lactate and the weight of the cup. And this mixes uh, much more easily. Uh, it will require just stirring. And uh, there we go, 100 grams for the empty cup. <clears throat> All right, so let's uh, get that mixed up, and I'll be back once again. Uh, also, you may notice I'm using uh, the uh, the vinyl exam gloves this time. This is powder-free. Uh, they're more sterile, 
than uh, what I normally use, which is the blue nitriles. Now, blue nitriles have uh, chemical resistance, but they are not sterile. These are sterile. And we're all set to have some fun. So, now, um, in my time as a uh, pantry chef, no, that's not a pastry chef, but a pantry chef. Now, in uh, French cooking, a uh, pantry chef is responsible for salads and desserts, which is a whole lot of words for saying that, in my experience, uh, spirification techniques uh, for food, they need to set for about uh, 10 minutes in solution. Simply drop it in. Okay. Roll it off. And I'm going to pop that out in about 10 minutes. I'm going to take it out and try to take it out and uh, put it in this colander here so that it can, uh, the excess can drain off. And I'm keeping these items separated because I want to keep doing it. I'll be back. Well, what's really cool is that uh, in reviewing the segment I noticed that uh, my water pop disintegrated as soon as I pulled the spoon out and that's uh, that's something good for you to see I'm going to try this once more now I have rinsed this so that there is none of that that's going to go back into here this has a little bit of a sharp edge but I'm going to try this one more time and uh, I could see it disintegrate on camera and uh, you'll see that too I could not see it uh, as I was doing it. So I'm going to, this time I'm going to use the camera as an aid. Now in gastronomy we typically don't make huge poppers like this. We just make little rice size spears as decoration. Let's see. So it's still intact. Now I'm going to very gently try to pull this off of it. And uh, my issue may be the uh, sharp edge. I can see it now in the water. And I can't tell if that disintegrated as well or not. That certainly looked like it. So I may have to choose another spatula. Yeah, that, uh, that looks like that went as well. And I'm going to try to fish out this first one that I can see on camera that disintegrated. See if there's anything left of it. Looks pretty much done in. So these are good. These are good. Uh, you get value from this. I just don't think there's any beer, anything there, folks. So. Okay. Let's 
Let me go see if I can find anything suitable that doesn't have this burr. I'll be back. All right, so I've switched to my trusty little uh, measuring cup. Uh, it has a very clean edge. However, when I went to fish through the water to get any of this out of that before I started a fresh batch, I discovered something waiting for me. There we are. A little tiny edible water popper. And I'm going to, uh, I'm simply going to let this drain. And I think I found a larger one in there. There we are. Now, until these have uh, set up a little bit, you uh, honestly you don't want them to touch because they will simply stick to each other. And when you go to pull them, and another little tiny one. And I am going to try this and see if I can get a. Uh, a better version for you. So I'm going to drop this in. And uh, I'll come back and uh, when I come back I'm going to fish this out and then I'm going to have a taste. Alrighty then, so there you have it. Okay, uh, edible water poppers. Uh, perhaps water pods but water poppers so I'm going to try to fish this one out now now while I'm doing that uh, a couple of takeaways on this the uh, the edible portion of it it's not terribly appetizing that's why in uh, gastronomy they use it only slightly for right size pellets, but they also uh, flavor this um, with mint, um, something, you know, uh, sometimes ginger, uh, things like that, to make the, uh, the seaweed a bit more palatable. So, there's a thought for you there. Now, you can also add, uh, you can make Kool-Aid and put this in it and make yourself some Kool-Aid poppers. So, here we are. And you will see. Oh, water. And I don't need the uh, the jelly part. Now it's fine to throw this away. This will simply uh, degrade into valuable nutrients for the soil. This is basically a finely ground seaweed powder and a highly soluble salt. Those are the two ingredients for making water poppers. Thanks again for watching, and if you like, uh, please subscribe and join me again next time. We're going to do something, edible candy wrappers perhaps? Edible packaging. Okay, bye-bye.